Good morning students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit of measurement and units our last lesson will be about how to measure volume. In the previous lessons we have introduced the concept of mass, volume and density and as we get closer to our final lab let's see how we can find the volume of an object and we'll start with the easiest case how to find the volume of a regular shaped solid so let's for instance take a look at this example uh, this is a rectangular prism so it's a very regular uh, shaped object and in this case we're not going to measure directly but we're going to use geometry and namely what we're going to do, we're going to use our um, usual uh, length measuring um, tools like a ruler or a caliper and we're going to use them to measure what we call the dimensions of our uh, regular shaped object uh, we can call these dimensions in the way we want for instance I have chosen to call them length, width and height um, your choice does not really change the final outcome uh, it doesn't matter which one we call length, which one is the width, which one is the height because as you know multiplication is commutative so it doesn't matter in which order you multiply these numbers the result will always be that the volume is given by these three combined so you'll always get this same result so, in the case of regular shaped object, we're going to use geometry. In the case of a rectangular prism, the volume will be given by length times width times height. Now, sometimes you will be asked to measure the volume of a liquid. In that case, you use the property that liquids will take the shape of a container. So we're going to use a very special type of container called a measuring cylinder, which as you can see is a cylinder usually made of a transparent material like plastic or glass and it has a scale. This scale is usually given in units of volume like the cubic centimeter or an equivalent unit, so a unit which has exactly the same unit uh, value, which is called the milliliter. And what do you do? You pour your liquid and you get the reading. Uh, so it's very immediate. So in this case, you really measure directly the volume. And you can use this for basically any liquid. How to measure the volume of a liquid will come in handy if, on the other hand, I want to find the volume of a solid which doesn't have a regular shape. So let's say we have a lump of rock of any shape. We want to find the volume. Geometry will not be of help in this case. But luckily, we, have, we can use an idea firstly came out from um, the Greek scientist Archimedes when he solved a, a problem which is very similar to finding the volume of a lump of rock and this is why he said in Greek Eureka which means I found it and how we're we going to do it um, in this case we have to do a two-step process in step number one we take again a measuring cylinder measuring cylinder which of course has to be wide enough to accommodate our object inside we fill it with a liquid doesn't have to be necessarily water, although water is the one that we're going to use most of the times. And we, of course, again, we're not going to fill it all the way to the top. Um, a good indication is to fill it just enough to cover our object. So we keep our object here, see the level of the water, say, okay, it's enough to cover it. And we take the reading. So this is the volume of the liquid. Then what we do, we take our object and we put it inside the measuring cylinder. Putting it inside doesn't mean drop it, because in that case water will spill out. You usually need to lower it gently. And what will happen, the stone, the lump of rock, 
the whatever solid it is will displace the water the level of the water will rise so you take the new reading which I call 2 and obviously at this point the volume of your solid is just the difference between the second reading and the first one so as I summarize is 2 minus 1 where 2 I mean sec I mean second reading minus first reading since we talked a lot about liquids there's a word of caution because it's very obvious how we can measure the mass of a solid you just place it on a balance it's less obvious how we find the mass of a liquid you can't pour the liquid on top of the balance because it will just spill all over the place um, so it's obvious that you need a container so for, let's imagine you have a bottle filled with a red mysterious liquid you don't know what the liquid is and one of the ways of identifying is finding its mass because you know if I know the mass I find the volume combine the two I get the density and from the density I might have an idea of what our substance is and again how we can do this we can combine two measurements in one so we can use a measuring cylinder and you might think okay I'm using the measuring cylinder to find the volume of a liquid but how about the mass? Now it's very important that you can, use the, you can use the measuring cylinder as a container to measure the mass of a liquid upon a balance. But you have to think that if you do this, your reading from a balance will be the mass of the liquid, all right, plus the mass of a container. So you have to take that away. How you do, you have to do a measurement before that you have to measure the mass of your empty container, of your empty cylinder. And at this point, you compare these two readings, these two measurements of mass, and again, the mass of your liquid will be mass of reading number two minus mass of reading number one. So, the learning goals of this last lesson of measurement in units. It's very simple to see which were, which were they were. Uh, measure the volume of a liquid, calculate the volume of a regular shaped solid, and finally, measure the volume of an irregular shaped solid. And for Mr. Boscarini, that's all. Goodbye.